talking to your microphone, Janet. Good morning, Janet. Good morning. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, I've been a social worker for about 17 years and I've worked in different sections of um, social services. I've worked in mental health, um, with people with sensory impairment um, and I've, had, I've got a lot of uh, varied and wide experience, um, particularly about mental health, um, which I, you know, I've, I've taken along to different authorities. I've not just worked in one authority, I've worked in different authorities and seen how they work. And they all are very similar um, with how they treat um, people across the board who are in mental um, health institutions and the, ser the service and treatment that they get does vary between um, our particularly between black people and um, Caucasians or white people okay and for those um, of our listeners who just think mental health is people talking to themselves on the street or dressing in weird clothes could you define what mental health is right it's very broad and wide so it's quite difficult really because um, mental ill health affects everyone in very different ways you know so they have mostly they will have very unrealistic ideas of, of life they really cannot function it's almost as if they've 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 given up on everything um washing cooking um looking after their family shopping they just cannot do anything and whatever their ideas and views that they have is very very real to them i can give you a very quick experience of uh, when i when i've been on a visit to somebody and i'll be sitting there and you know all of a sudden he'll say look fire's coming up my foot fire's coming up my foot but to him it's very real but mm -hmm. there's nothing there but you know and, and he's literally cringing in the corner or trying to get away from the um the thing that is happening to him but so whatever is happening their thoughts and their ideas are very real to them so it, it is a breakdown um of a functioning in their mind where they, they cannot realistically um no longer see what, what everyday people normally what, what people are normal you know mm -hmm. what we do and say on a normal basis very hard okay so um so, for example, um, some of our black men are given the option when they um, are in the courts, um, if they've been overly aggressive or if their behavior is perceived as being um, not normal, mm -hmm. they are sometimes considered as being mentally deficient or, you know, dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they can be can they be sectioned under the mental health act or can they be given an order under the mental health so that they end up in a mental institution when they shouldn't really belong there right okay a lot of our, our black men do end up in the wrong place and it's usually because of um, they have to have an assessment and the assessment then would be led by a social worker um, who really doesn't understand the cultural or the ethics about around black people as well and they will ask a few questions and delve in and if they don't get the right if you like textbooks answers mm -hmm. then that's it right he, this person is mad he's not giving me the right answer you know there's things like just going off the beaten track just for a few seconds when I've been out and I have visited um, clients with my white colleagues and um, my lady's there she might be there clean, picking the rice as we call it she's cleaning the rice mm -hmm. and they said woman is mad she's clearly mad now had not been a, a black person been there to say look this is how we do things within our culture mm -hmm. you know the, they would have sectioned her because they saw her picking the rice they, like this is not normal behavior but they don't understand the cultural um Mm. ways of, 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 of black people it seems like when we go into some people's homes like take your shoes off because it's it's been respectful and you, you've come in from outside with your shoes on um, the, the, uh, there's also a time when I went on a visit and the lady her son had died and she had her Bible open by the front door you know she has her own religious beliefs mm -hmm. and my colleagues said, this is absolutely mad nobody puts you know does these sort of things they cannot they've got no idea it's into the cultural like, it sounds to me as though these people have developed an attitude because of the, they've worked with people who are sick and a lot of these people sound to me like they're just going through some quite deep depression mm -hmm. yeah they now see anything that 
to debt that they don't do personally mm -hmm. even and would turn around and say you're crazy because they don't do that mm -hmm. you understand what i'm saying so it sounds kind of it's kind of scary yeah, though because i mean if these people are the ones that are deciding whether, you're deciding whether or yeah. not you're mentally deficient yeah. or not so is there are there a lot of black social workers i mean why aren't there black social workers working just with black people who understand the culture then well as the social workers we can we do certain things for to a point but then everything else goes over to the consultants and they are usually white i i've, I've not known a black consultant i have to okay. say which is really sad and so they will take our assessment or our information to a point but then they are the um the expertise in that area mm -hmm. and they will say okay fine i hear what you said but this person needs to have this particular drug whether it's um, a depot injection or um mm -hmm. some form of tablet it uh, and I firmly believe and I've done some research I wrote a paper on this as well that when particularly black men when they've had certain types of drugs for whatever uh, mental illness might have might be bipolar or um, a personality disorder the drugs that they give them our body and makeup is very different to to white people and it tends to hold more of the drug and they do get a little bit more to calm them down that bit quicker and once they have this whatever the, the psychotic drugs are their body structure changes they become bloated they mm. become sluggish their speech is slurred and it's happened in every across the board the women and the men as well it's not just um one or two it happens with all the 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 guys who have had who have been treated mm -hmm. um with, with the psychotic drugs um there are they have sections in the mental health um uh team if you like and within these sections a lot of lot of the the people who are section don't know this they either you, depending on what section you put on is to what treatment you get if you're picked up on a section two and you're assessed on a section two it does not mean you need to have drugs it means they will come in and you'll have a consultation but then they persuade you okay as you're here now take this medication it will do do you good but because you're on a section two but you have to understand all this what the sections mean that a section two does not mean you have to be given drugs a section three is where you're held and given drugs so there are different numbers right. um, oh, so people if they don't know what section they, they, they've exactly. been exactly that yeah. is it yeah. so when you're sectioned you know if you if you have an advocate with you you ask what section this person on right what does that section do mm -hmm. section two it's only for an assessment it is not for treatment or medication okay right section three is where they hold you for six months and you have medication mm -hmm. okay and what section do they how far do the sections go up um they're not sort of numbered randomly okay like the police have a, they have 136 where they can pick up and detain a person on 136 so the numbers are um not in not in sequence. oh okay so they're not like four five six no, seven no. okay but there they are certain numbers within that right. particular section of the mental health can, act can i just retrack on what, when mm -hmm. you, you mentioned cons consent was it the consultant consultant can yeah. i get it out of my mouth uh -huh. properly um i just wanted to ask what qualifies or what qualifies somebody to to get to the consultant level how could a black person get to that level it's, it's training all about training right. um right. and studying the um laws of mental health and just qualifying to be you know as if you were university and, and do that as well right. have yeah. you thought about being a consultant no definitely not <laughs> why not why not no I mean, you laugh but yeah. why not yeah. um since there's a shortage that there is a shortage and I, I probably would be very good at it and skilled at what I do because I'd be able to understand and be able to relate more and not just going straight away with drugs but um, I, I just feel that I, I, the area of work I work in um, I do I've che I've che I can achieve quite a lot and I have achieved quite a lot mm -hmm. and uh, I like working probably on that level rather than go higher because it, it's a hard slog in there you, you're fought all the way but you have to be a very strong and determined person to be able to say look this is what i'm doing and and, and be strong in what you're doing here yeah, my concern is is that if if the major if all of the consultants mm. are white and these are the people who have jurisdiction over black people
and then we have black people who only want to go so far and don't want to commit mm. themselves to go any further where they could make a significant difference you know i mean it's it's kind of sad don't you think it is i i do agree with i'm that. not putting the onus on you no. it's just that we do need people in positions where they make That's decisions i mean but do, do you i mean are you skeptic are you have you maybe thought maybe you wouldn't get that position probably not I've got two things against me, and a black and a woman. So, and that yes, is but you know, you still got the equality. Yeah. You still got the quality um, mm. law in place, and yes, you know, even sometimes they've got the tokenism. Whether it's whether you like the word tokenism or not, but you could be that person who they decide they're going to select. Mm. I mean, you've got all the qualifications, and you've got, you know, you've been in the system for a long time. Mm. And I was just thinking, it probably could be a way forward how many years has there actually been a mental health um section in, in on the nhs how many years has this oh been many many a long year yeah because the act goes back to all 1983 so it was well well before that, before that right. and there have been lots of changes because it was very harsh and ruthless before i suppose the the law is kind straight, of straight hold down and drugged up kind of thing yes that yes kind of attitude i've seen that I've, yeah i've been the mm. i've been in the back working back then when they used to have um the the strap them down they were lo locked yeah. into the one room the where the 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 walls were padded the padded cells i've been there seen that and that's only recent well so recently perhaps in the last uh 14 years that's been taken away the last one was in hitchin and it was used it was it was used yes it was used okay so you know like when they're saying now that even that if you've got mental health you can get a community order now do you do you know anything about that i mean it's supposed to be um an option rather than go to prison mm -hmm. um you the people with mental health problems can actually get a community order and i mean i think that's a bit scary in a sense if they're not being assessed and they're just being given a community order based on you know whatever their behavior right. is i guess okay yes it's all about like care in the community yeah. where they are um supposed to be looked after within the community right. but it doesn't happen because they do slip through the net um if they have to have like injections every two weeks and the cpn which is the um i forgot cpn has gone right out of my is head is it a nurse uh, or something yes it's okay. um they it'll come back to me but right, the cpns would actually visit um the, the clients and in, in administer their their medication but sometimes the clients aren't there so that they've missed two weeks of injections and so of course they're they're out in the community without any medication that actually stabilizes them oh i see and that's where a lot of the problems start and they said oh you know he's gone off mad again but he but no one is actually checking up to make oh, sure oh they're they, it's not being through. monitored no there's no monitoring okay we're talking to janet brown on life fm the diy reggae show if you want to call in 0208 963 okay i wanted to know um a lot of um our black brothers who end up in mental institutions as opposed to jail they might think it's an easier option end up staying in there for quite a long time longer than even if they're t or taking the option of jail mm -hmm. why is that usually because there's no one to advocate for them mm -hmm. once they've said okay they're in a say on a section three and that is a six month stay okay you have no family come to visit you or you know you're on your own so there's no one there to advocate for you to say look what's happening with his treatment how long has he been here you know can he go out because there's times when you can actually go out on days to, to go shopping or just a break from the actual mm. institution because it is you're locked in literally um but there's nothing there's no one to advocate for them and there is the only thing they have is um uh, an assessment at the end of three months to see if they are deemed well enough to leave okay. and go back into the community and that is through a tribunal um, it's an appeals tribunal but then okay. if the client doesn't know they can actually ask for a tr an appeal you yeah. start by law it should be uh, administered okay. but sometimes yet again they slip through the net so don't actually get their appeal and they are known many been there for two three years I know. a very long time and Still some of them if they haven't got the number to contact someone because i know somebody who was in a mental institution well it was a tenant of my mother mm -hmm. 
and he so he used to go off anyway he ended up into this mental institution and everybody thought he was dead they didn't know where he was they hadn't heard from him and then out of the blue my mother got a call and said you know he said look can you come and look for me because if you don't come and look for me they're going to keep me here yeah so my mother went to see him and you know within I think four, four or five months he was out mm -hmm. but I understand what you say when people get left but isn't don't they have like a free advocacy service where people just go around checking um, the status of people in those institutions no nothing like that because to have an advocate uh, <laughs> advocacy worker mm -hmm. it actually cost so it's like who's going to pay for this worker and of course it's got no family to say look we can pay there's nothing nothing is done and it still happens today it's really sad it still happens today even within this the society that we have where things you know um are supposed to be like better it isn't better it's still back in the 1990s where you know so what about if i'm thinking about problem solving at the moment that's what's going through my head mm -hmm. what about if we had a group of um, volunteers i mean some people who've been there for maybe over six months to a year they might actually develop uh, mental health problems just by virtue of being around in that yes. environment but supposing the new people who went in maybe if they could be monitored i mean you know if you could start if we could start from something like that you know if there was some kind of volunteer group who who just went because are these uh, mental health institutions are they kind of in one place or are they all over the place where are they they're usually attached to the hospitals and they're kind of at, at like out back to the actual main hospitals and they have names of them either like say like farringdon unit or um, carnwood court or so whatever they mm -hmm. have units for them that's where they are and there's two types they have the um where they're actually locked up lock and key or the informal Blimey. where they can come and go Oh. Um, so they can actually go there um, in the, and then go home in the daytime and come back to sleep and have their meals there and to make sure the medication is still, they're still getting medication. But the ones who are under lock and key do not leave there at all and it's, it's overcrowded. So when they're under lock and key, what have they done to be under lock and key? The um, ASW, which is the approved social worker, has said this person is deemed to have a mental ill health. That is, um, so he's a risk to himself and a risk to other people. And uh, so, he, and that's it, literally, because he's not safe to live with other people within the community. Yeah, but if he's never allowed in there, how does it? How does he learn integration skills? Then, if it's in, if is he in isolation? Or are, are some they? are depends depends on how the mental illness is they are lot they are on their own but, or they have a nurse with them that's followed follows them 24 7 all day long just following them all the time so if they go to the toilet the nurse waits outside if they go and have their lunch the, the nurse is by their side so it's, it's like that oh, wow that's heavy stuff so a person off the street just couldn't say oh well you know like in the prisons mm -hmm. people you know i could go into any prison and i could just walk into a prison and check the people in the cells you know you don't need a permission you just need to say that you're going to be um i forget what they call it but yeah. anybody can do that they can go into the cells mm -hmm. and check the you know whether or not anybody's being abused mm -hmm. or that you know how the cells are being kept you can you do that like in mental health institutions and can anybody just walk in and do that no you have to have a reason why you're going to see that person who you are to the person so it's usually social workers that really have access to the um, the ones who are, have been sectioned because no one else would have a reason to see that person unless you're a family member but suppose you're a concerned citizen no you cannot <laughs> no, but you see what I no mean? there's no access <laughs> no but that's not right though no and that's and that's why a lot of them get missed they've just f fallen through the system and some you never see again and they come out and you normally on the street you can see that person has been in some sort of um isolation yes you mm. can by their yes. behavior yes. they learn certain behavior and they all adopt the same behavior pattern it's either a rocking motion or um, pacing up and down um and they're very bloated in their face it's like the um the fish syndrome the fish you know just in the tank back yes and forth, back back and forth. that's forth. it and that's yeah. all they do all if you take them long. out of that they actually go f they get worse because they can't deal with this thing Anything. that's so big and wide and it seems like and you know this is can give them more reason to yes. give up and just yeah. forget it let me just take some more drugs mm. and 
get rid of this 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 confusion that I'm feeling yeah. inside me. They need help, these people. They don't yeah. need drugs. I, I, think, I don't know if you notice that a lot of um, when you see people who who look oh, it looks like they've, they've had mental health issues. They have lots of clothes on. Yeah, lots of clothes. That is because the medication. Even in the summer, the medication Thanks. makes them feel very cold. They have hats on in the summer. You think they must be sweating, but they're not. They have three or four jumpers on and coats on top of that a scarf and that's what the medication does to you it, it just changes your whole body right, and, and so, so they feel that they're always cold wow so what do you think the way forward is Janet <sighs> I just think that, that um, it, I, I don't believe it's about um, um, assessing and locking up our, our brothers it is not about that it's about um, getting to know that the, the culture getting behind the culture of of what black people do what they like how they behave and then they will see there isn't a mental health problem here it, it's it's a cultural difference yeah it's a bit like how the police um, right, we, right. the police is, construe you you know if you're if you're having a heated debate mm. they construe it as an argument and you know as though you're disturbing the peace and you know they're ready to nab you yes so it's a similar dynamic mm. similar dynamics isn't yeah. it mm. i mean but by now i'm sure the police understand that you know we do communicate with a bit more vigor and aggression than, mm -hmm. than, than most other groups there's nothing wrong with that they know that they've been studying us for so long they must have learned that by now in fact they i won't go that far but <laughs> you know uh, but the thing is the same thing is with the mental what's health happening in the what's happening in the institution it's just people are, that are in there are ignorant mm. basically and they have not been educated enough to the level to be doing what they're doing mm. that's what it looks like to me mm. i don't care if they even have a phd in whatever mm. mental this and that if you haven't studied cultures and history you shouldn't be in that job because mm. you're going to be dealing with people from all backgrounds and all from all walks of life so these people it's another situation of institutionalized racism in basically these people do not care about black people and they're just there to section and give or give order to give drugs and get on with their life <laughs> i was just wondering you know That's the statistics like. of um, black people are do you think black people are overrepresented in these institutions definitely most definitely they are you walk in and as soon as you look around you can see it's it's 50% more and, and always well, really? uh, yeah, outside of London is this the case uh, abs abs yes absolutely as well absolutely oh, that's quite funny outside of London. outside London as well because why do you just think it's London? where are the, where are most mental institutions they're in hospitals right they're some a section are, of hospitals yes there's some right so I would assume that when you look into when you go into a black era obviously like Park Royal Hospital you're gonna you will assume that you're gonna see black more black faces but if you go outside of London it's I don't same. expect that you understand what I'm saying? So it's kind of, it, that's more sh frightening for me to go outside of London and see black people in a mental institution outside of London. Yeah, but there's lots of black people outside London though, okay, okay. Yeah, but spread out though, not densely, densely populated like in areas in London and areas in Birmingham. I'm, I'm going to say outside of London, I'm talking about just remote areas where there's hardly any black people. Is that the case? Or is it in the black areas still? I, I can talk about where I've worked, like places like I've worked in um, Luton and, and Wolverhampton, and it's and right, well, you find more. Yes, there's there's there. black people there. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I should have I should have made more, it clear what I was saying. Oh, okay, yes, no, was okay. Asking. Yeah, yeah. I was a bit shocked. <laughs> so densely populated, where it's black people, it's going to be predominantly black yes. people in those institutions. But saying that, we're still not um the majority even in luton you're, black people are not a majority in luton are they no i think asian what, I no the asian, the asian community uh -huh. do you see many asians in these not places many. not many there are more blacks um in there in most of them that you most that of you've them been to. yes i think they said the chinese population in mental is usually the lowest and then the asians isn't it because the thing is the chinese they're very together and, and then the asians they have that solid base that unifying together base. And herbal yeah doctor they have a lot of doctors in their community so they would essentially deal with their own problems yeah well, black respect. people are just left to the you know their yeah, own devices this is, and what, the devices this is of other calls people for, calls for us to have maybe you know our own section and system and maybe call for it from the government because as you say we're being mistreated so, yeah. and misrepresented yeah. misrepresented and we're not even being represented we're just being sectioned and put away exactly <laughs> and no but it's true yeah and i do find that you know even the the, the 
the older black mums when their separate their sons or their daughters have been sectioned um, do come and find out what's going on but it's getting less and less you know nobody bothers with with, with the I think the, the, with, with all the added them. stresses, you know, as we were saying, like, like the mortgage and yeah. all these things, with all the added stresses that have been added on people's minds now, getting rid of somebody who is just a maybe burden. another burden mm. financially mm. and 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 mentally, physically, you know, they just put them away and think, <laughs> think mm. forgot, forgot it, forget it, because it's not mm. going to come back, kind of thing. And if they, if people have lost that faith in you that you're, you're never going to come back, they would. I would, I could, I could see people just leaving their, you know. They probably don't even want cousins. them to come back. Yeah. That's, that's the problem I mean. because a, they would be a burden once they come back. Yes, yes. and when they do get out, then they're set up into one bedroom um, room somewhere. You know, no job, no money. So they're back to the spirals again because then the depression starts again. Yeah. yeah. So yes, we're, we're we're talking to Janet Brown from which Enfield. Enfield. <laughs> which went to <laughs> she worked in a mental institution and. The number to call the studio if you have any comments on anything you've heard us talking about is zero two eight. Do you think that the drugs almost put the the what do you call the patients mm -hmm. in a position where it's harder to come back to normality? Do you think that, that that's the case? Yeah. After giving take them being given these drugs, I mean, you said six months. I mean, how often within six months are they injected with these drugs? Right. They have the drugs on a weekly basis. They can be, if they won't take them orally, that's why they give them to them inje in by injection right. form, because they won't take them, uh, they yeah. won't swallow them by mouth. Right. And it's almost like a forced thing. Yes. So once they've had the drugs and it's in their system, it changes their whole metabolism. Everything about yes. um, the person changes their face, um, their body structure, the way they behave. They might sit and rock, or they might pace up and down, they might tap. It, it, it's just like it, it, the drug. So, has there been no study into these drugs and why the, and, and the, this, the fact that they encourage this kind of behavior? Has there been no. Nobody's actually stood up and said, well, we, I think we should stop giving them these drugs because it's causing this effect and that effect. Has nobody, has nobody come up with any... Yes, they've had lots of talks about the drugs and they know that the drugs cause certain behaviours in, in, in the clients. But what they say is, this is the only thing they have, the only thing that will work. Right, and they're not so willing to go and research anything else. For now. For now. Right. But it has been talked about and they know the... Um, that the, what, what, what the drugs causes and how it yes. makes the patients react which is really awful at times mm. um, and then after they've had their, their the, the drugs on a weekly basis they're, in, they're injected or by tablet form um, when they're actually out of hospital they have to continue taking the drugs and as I say if they don't take them orally then they go and have injections every fortnight do you think they're using um, them as scapegoats I think a lot of them use for testing new drugs that come out, and I'm. Uh, oh, I right. can't yeah, prove that's it. What, you know, right. yeah, no, I can't prove it, but I know just, certain ones. Oh, it's a new drug. Let's try it on. Yeah. See how they react. And yeah. I, it, who better to try it on than somebody who's, who's yeah, who's, who's not in cared that? About. Exactly. Yeah. No one, no one. Yeah. About yeah. It. Some have had very bad reaction to the drugs, and you know, they've had, had convulsions, they've shaked, um, things like that. I, I before. When I first was excited to do social work, um, for about the first two years into it, I used to go, and this was part of our training, we had to watch them have, um, it's called ECT, and it's where they um, put the electric, I don't know if you've seen that film, one for the cuckoo's nest. Oh, no, that was a long time right. ago. and it was like that then and they used to have the wire up to the electric and they used to get actually give them electric shock and the whole body would jump oh, and no. they've had the injection but and then they come out their face was um especially the white people's red and and they come out days they couldn't see you talk to you didn't they couldn't function and they used to give them that treatment why was that um to subdue them to subdue them as well because if they were very a lot of them who were very active of, yeah. and wouldn't calm down and they used to give, give them the ECT treatment but they've ruled that out that that no longer happens so basically they've actually admitted people to an institution that basically it, are giving these people drugs to keep themselves safe in that environment do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The people that are working there, are, it's almost oh, like yes. they're giving them, the people the drugs to subdue their, their, their energy levels so they can feel safe in that environment. So it's not really to, to, to deal with the problem. Yeah. It's just, you just basically, people are in, imprisoned and being given drugs. Yeah. So as I said, 
for a purpose yeah. so it sounds like the testing for yeah. me I, I can i can definitely get someone i'm getting more understanding from this thing yeah. now because i think this is a quiet thing that's happening here that mm-hmm. when nobody's really paying attention exactly. to it's getting worse yeah because i'm seeing people of my generation walk up and down in halls and right now mm. and they've been sick for many years and i don't know they might have went in that place for once and then mm. that was it they can't come back now and you know i tell some of these people that i know well one person i know don't smoke anything when you come out of there let the drugs come out of your blood first and the way to get it out i mean i as far as i know is to take uh, bitters for a few months and let it flush out because it can come out but obviously most people aren't going to be patient enough to discipline themselves to get it out they're mm. not even thinking that they're just thinking if they stop taking it it's, it's, it will go but it's not like that mm-hmm. i could just yeah comment on that because um a, a lot of them's been told you know not not to smoke um s- uh, certain substances whether taking the medication because it has a really adverse effect on them definitely and uh, and because they're on the medication for such a long time when they come out they're on it continuous continually as well the the smoking and the medication does not agree that's why they're back in again within a few months yes because they, they've gone back to the the relapse literally yes a relapse mm. yeah i see it with a particular guy that i know i see he yeah, i see it with him all the time he comes out and he's normal and very loving character yeah. when i say loving i'm talking about loving a man that's built a house for his mom in jamaica since he was here mm-hmm. and brought people in from jamaica since he was here he's just loving guy fully loving but then he just changes into something else and it he hates this he hates that and then he would just go and do something like walk into the middle of the high street and stop a lorry mm-hmm. and start chanting some sounds and stuff but the sounds the things he's saying are not crazy things he's yeah. speaking the truth yeah but obviously he's the frustration the anger is is it's almost allowed him to he almost doesn't know what kind of situation he's, li- he's in in a sense he's not in the real world because you know in the real world you can't do that because the police will come for you it's just oh. and then they the inevitable the police come for him and then and he's back they check him his name he's sectioned he's been so he's back in, back in yeah you know, and for for a longer period as well yeah well they say that they're moving towards um drugging people you know in order to control them so i guess what better feeding ground is there than a mental institution mm-hmm. yeah. really and truly so maybe they're gonna build more mental institutions yeah and uh, <laughs> no under the guise i mean you know i'm <laughs> tell you something some, they, they need to have some advocacy people there though i mean i don't think these people should just be allowed to just stay there and rot mm-hmm. no sir no 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 give us a call Give us a call on 0208-963-9566. Bob Marley on the DIY Reggae Show. So much trouble in the world. All people from different sectors we invite in and we sit down and speak to them. We're realizing more that we need uh, we need bodies yeah, in every single know, area yeah. of the society. Exactly. You, you understand at the, at the highest levels and we don't have it. So I think this is our problem. <laughs> I think it is our problem and I Seriously. think the way... We like can't what have I'm other saying. people dealing with our issues. Not the people that effectively who... Can I say this? But brought us into this situation in the first place they're the ones that we're offering to solve giving up uh, giving chance to solve our own problems i don't think that's going to happen you know well like it's like um janet brown said i mean consultants who are pre- well actually exclusively white mm-hmm. are the ones who are making the decisions on our black brothers so number one i would say put consultants in first mm-hmm. i'd also think i'd also work on a program where we we whether it's volunteers or whatever whether it's paid advocates to go in check up on our people we sh- the same way the police have got a system in place where you can go in and check this the the cells and what's happening to people inside the cells the same way they should have a system where people can just walk in and check what's happening in the mental institutions keep you know so you know so they know they're being monitored and i think that is that might be halfway towards a solution what do you think <sighs> It, it it takes it definitely we need people in in the consultant position n- now because we have a problem right now with these consultants kind of being ignorant towards an understanding of of black and different the different culture that they're dealing with but um you know ultimately i think we need to try and keep our brothers out of these institutions somehow and that's where because half of them don't need to be there because they maybe just suffering depression yeah and they may have just gone out one day in the street and made a loud 
noise blast and 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 decided to tell everyone to f off yeah to whatever can yeah. I, to you know go wherever mm. and um apologize for that just yeah <laughs> just for that l reason they're being put in a mental institution but it's true uh, or offered the, the, the opportunity to go there other than prison yeah. not knowing that once you get that injection if you're not firm you're finished mm. That's your that's your spiral down. I think if you're firm or not firm, you can. And once you've actually once you're in the system, then you're labelled. You are given a diagnosis, and that diagnosis could be a bipolar, schizophrenic, a personality disorder. It has to have a label. Right. You can't just say, "Oh well, he's mentally unwell." No, no, no. What is the label? What is his diagnosis? Right. And as soon as they have that, then that's it. it. Sticks you're on stuck. You. it yeah, sticks it sticks on, on you. you. You can't mm. shift that. And everywhere you go. So if you go for a job, okay, it's bipolar. Okay, bipolar. what's bipolar? It's um, a mental illness. Whereas one minute you're up, you're very high, and the world's wonderful. What well, can and, happen and to anyone? Can Yes, and you have a next yeah. time you're low, you're crying, you're upset. Oh, so, no, it, 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 but the difference is, you're right, Lady Lady, but the difference is maybe me and you will have that feeling, but we'll we'll have it to ourselves. Can control it. Oh, yes. I see. Okay. We will take it out into the public for people to witness. Okay. You're going through that those different feelings. So mm. that's the difference. I mean, another occasion, my, fr my the guy that I know, he actually um went up into a house and just started giving away his money. Mm. And just mm, said, I wish I was there. Need it. <laughs> I wish I was there. <laughs> started giving his money away oh, and everything. No. You know, it was like. Is it, uh, yeah, it's you know, this is this is this is this is the extreme because that's love, you know, to give or give, mm. and he's a very giving person. But, but being that he's not well, he's doing he's being extra about his love and mm. just saying, you know what, like give, take it all, take it mm. all. I don't need it. And then obviously, obviously they know that he needs to get home. <laughs> yeah. So come on, like. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so the labelling is, you know, another another way which they've they've got the person because once you have got the label, the police, are, okay, we, he's known to us. He's a schizophrenic. He's a this. So you know, and you'll always have it's, yeah. problems. See, 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 these people, they they need some some sort of other direction support. You know, from coming from a different direction, meaning that somebody actually needs to sit down with these people because they have maybe psychological things that they haven't dealt with growing mm. up. You know, I mean. For instance, I can tell you that the guy that I'm talking about, that I keep mentioning, he can't read good. So I think, and he didn't grow with his father, and he has a lot oh, of resent towards yeah. a m man and okay. giving, giving, giving man any respect. Okay. So all these things, I don't know if these things have built up in him, and he hasn't dealt with them, mm. and now it's coming out in these odd ways and. Yeah. Doesn't mean he's mad no, though. Does no, 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 no. But he's exactly. not. He's, he's, but he's been yeah. Now he's taken the pill and he's been injected. He's now got this. Label. As you said, he's got this feeling running through his body. He probably feels cold at mm -hmm. times, and you know, I haven't seen him swell though. That's I'm. I've been quite surprised because okay. I've always asked, are, they, "Are you taking? Are you getting the drugs?" Mm. But he doesn't take. <laughs> Nobody knows who he is and nobody knows who we're talking yeah. about, so it doesn't matter, but yeah. he doesn't take, take it. No, he just he's pretends lucky. he's taking it, so he stays calm for that process and just doesn't take yeah. it. It's a bit but like your, equilib your equilibrium film. Yeah, but I've, I've been in there and I've seen people in there and believe me, I do not like to visit this place because you hear some funny noises in there. I oh, know, it's scary. Yeah, it's not, it's yeah, like... It's not nice. Uh, it's horrible. Oh, I don't know, it's, it's so awful. Let's, uh, let's uh, let Bob I mean, I'm sure people. Some. I'm sure people are not going to be, you know, happy to be told by the AK Champions and Lady Lloyd to, you know, go and get a job in the <laughs> mental health <laughs> section, you know, to go and. But just volunteer. I mean, uh, you know, um, our our guest was saying that some of them they're in underpants because there's nobody in there washing their clothes. The people in, in these institutions don't wash their clothes for them. Mm -hmm. So these people are in there totally totally neglected you know i mean mm. that is serious this is stuff. dark age stuff this is stuff mm -hmm. that should not be going on but you know again we need a louder voice to speak up yeah. for us we need some big voices we need you know the guys in the political positions who like wh who can we name some Na start naming them david lammy um we have who we have people like mm. paul boating these people for me, I, I, I don't know if I should call their names, but well, they, they should they're the only be ones doing something. Yeah, to, to people, and we need to at least call on them and make them aware of these things and let them speak up on our behalf. Yeah. But,
Is that is that? Do you think that can happen? Well, I mean, even if they put washing machines in there, so you know what I mean. Make <laughs> them so no, so something to make them self-sufficient. You. you know what I mean. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be a situation where these people are dependent on somebody for them to look after them. You know what I mean? They might be mad, but I'm sure they know how to wash themselves and keep themselves clean. And even if they don't, they could be retrained if they've forgotten. So they need some tra retraining programs, and they need washing machines, and they need all of those kind of stuff. Just don't give them no knives and forks. <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? But I mean, well, how do they eat? If they do, they get knives and forks. Or are they fed? No, they have plastic cutlery. They have plastic, plastic cutlery, cups. Right, yeah, well, they can't do anything with that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they could hurt themselves with with actual yeah, knives, yeah. and they're counted in and they're counted out. <laughs> but why are the people who feed them? Why don't you know, like in a hospital, why don't they wash their clothes? That, that's not that's not that's not their job. Their job is to provide this particular this area of work, either do the cooking or um, do the cleaning there. They don't do that. That's why the the family members come in. They will do that. Take their clothes, wash them, bring them new clean clothes. Oh, give us some Bob Marley, okay? Uh. <laughs> That was about mental health. Um, I did that interview around um, 10 years ago, but the information contained in it is still very relevant. And every time I listen to it, it kind of, I find it very disturbing. Um, among the five broad ethnic groups, people in the black ethnic group were the most likely to have been detained under the Mental Health Act 2017-2018 commonly known as being sectioned and people in the white ethnic group were the least likely to be detained and among the specific ethnic groups black Caribbean people had the highest rate of detention out of all the ethnic groups for which ethnicity were reliably recorded um, what disturbs me about that is that when they say black Caribbean, I just have the feeling it's Jamaican because they're so misunderstood. Their culture, their vigor, their passion, and sometimes they're the hardest to control. And, you know, when they are um, put in that situation where they think mental institution or prison, when they think of prison, they think, oh, it's going to be, give me a police record. When they think of mental institution, they think it's a quick option. I'll go in there, um, they'll sort me out, I'll calm down, they'll let me free. Not realising that it's a life sentence of drugs and abuse. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, it was, um, the interview was done in 2008. So, um, I'm not quite sure if the situations have improved. Um, I haven't got that kind of information, but from where I'm sitting and from reading the media, I don't think it has improved. I'm going to put some links below, which will substantiate this. And thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>